peer security. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a webinar on Frontier Video in depth. Uh, we're going to build on the last webinar I did, uh, kind of use some of the same um, PowerPoint slides that I had done in my last webinar last month, but I uh, actually want to get into the application itself and look at some uh, real-time transactions. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be kind of a little bit all over the place because I'm going to be going into different parts of the uh, Frontier video system. So I'm going to go ahead and start off. Uh, what, during the webinar, you're going to notice um, alarms popping up in this bottom right corner here. I have, uh, I have the Frontier alarm pop-up enabled in the system. So uh, basically what's going to happen is I've, I've defined uh, video pop-up alarms on cameras for motion. Um, and, and what it does is uh, I'm able to work in any other application, uh, work on the access control system, maybe work in Word, whatever it may be, um, where it's going to pop up uh, video while I'm working and show me any alarms, uh, you know, without me having to actually go into the application. So you're going to see that occur as, as we go through the webinar. So first thing I wanted to talk about is I wanted to go over a couple of the, uh, the slides that we had previously talked about, uh, specifically in regards to licensing Frontier Video. So um, I'm just going to go over this briefly, make sure everyone has a, a clear understanding of it. Um, there's three different versions of the software. Uh, and if you look here, you've got Frontier Starter, Professional, and Enterprise. So on Frontier Starter, it's, it's more of an entry-level type software. Um, where you can only go up to 32 cameras, if that's all you have a need for. Uh, Frontier Professional, you're going to do unlimited cameras, as well as Frontier Enterprise. And there's a couple different features uh, at the enterprise level that you get, as opposed to at the professional level. Um, each, each version of the software, the way it's licensed is you're going to buy camera licenses, and that's the only thing you are going to buy. Uh, that camera license will have a different price depending on the version of software. So, you know, you might have a front, you'd have a Frontier Starter camera license that would be the most economical, um, and then the Frontier Professional would cost a little bit more than that, and then the Enterprise would be a little bit more than that. So, you know, basically if you have, let's say, a 10 camera system, um, you'll pay 10 times, you know, you'll pay for each camera license and you'll pay for 10 of those, and depending on the cost of that license will be the version that you have. Uh, Camera licenses are very easily applied in the system, uh, making it very flexible as far as if you have, um, well, really any type of camera. But if you have analog cameras or digital cameras, uh, the system doesn't really uh, care what type of camera it is. Uh, a camera license is a camera license. And it is applied um, as a count within the system. So it's not tied to a MAC address or anything like that. So for instance, if you have it makes it uh, very flexible as far as uh, exchanging cameras, moving cameras along or around within the system. You don't have to you don't have to call the manufacturer or the integrator or anything like that to move a camera license because it's not actually tied to a specific camera. Um, so, on the client level and on the actual server level, all the pieces of the VMS software are included. Uh, with the camera license fees. So uh, on, say, for instance, the client level, you can load as many of those as you'd like. Uh, you can use as many instances as, of those as you like. Uh, the software just com actually, software components come with the camera licenses. So this next screen here shows the differences between the starter, the professional, and the enterprise versions uh, of the Frontier video product. So as you can see, we talked about the starter. It goes up to 32 cameras. Um, maximum number of servers is only one. Um, 32 live view. But you can kind of take a look here, and, and you can get this information uh, on our website, as far as the starter and the professional and the enterprise and what the differences are. Uh, really, at the starter level, it's really more of a single site type uh, installation. Um, and if that's all you need, then, then that'll work really good for you. Uh, at the professional level, it's where you start getting into more of an enterprise type system where you have multiple buildings um, and multiple servers and it give you the ability to administer uh, those type of things. 
Uh, on the enterprise level, um, basically what you're going to get is Active Directory integration. Um, you're going to get structured views and you're going to get um, video proxy. Um, those are going to be the, the three things that are going to be different on the enterprise level. And like I said, the, the starter version would have one price per camera license, the professional would have another that would be a little bit more, and then the enterprise would be more than that. So they just basically build on each other. Uh, if you did start off with, say, a starter or a professional and you wanted to upgrade, there is also an option to upgrade the camera licenses uh, to get you to a, you know, a higher level if you want to go to professional or enterprise. Now, I had shown some Frontier Video System component examples. Um, so, you know, the bottom line is the Frontier Video System, the VMS and recording server, uh, it can be all on one server. So you could have an encoder, uh, an encoder on the server, which we do provide encoders at the server level um, for the camera. So you could have encoder on the server. You could be recording it as well as managing it all from the same server. Uh, this is typically, you know, this is going to be done on a, a smaller system. Um, you typically see, you might see the recording server separated from the video management server and things like that, uh, or multiple recording servers, for instance, and maybe one uh, management server. So really, as far as the way you structure your servers and the way you set up your recorders uh, is going to depend on the size of the system and, and what you're going to need to, how you're going to need to set up the system. So the video pop-up, uh, that's, that's what I do have running now. Um, we'll, we'll see uh, little clips occasionally pop up in the right corner here. Um, but the great thing about the video pop-up alarm window is this can be, this is a piece of software that can run on, on any system. So even if, uh, for instance, this was uh, an administration type computer and I just wanted to have visibility of certain alarms uh, within my organization or my facility, I could be working in Word, I could be doing email, et cetera, and it'll just give me a pop-up and show me uh, when alarms occur that I've set up. So there's one right now. When this happens, I can double-click it. And now I'm actually, this is a live view uh, here at the headquarters. Uh, I, you know, at this point, I can actually just view live video and I can leave this window open if I desire to, if I see something that I want to continue to monitor. But really what it's designed for is just giving you uh, a quick view of what's going on at the alarm level. Uh, and then if you decide you want to investigate further, then you can go deeper into the application and look at these things. The next thing we want to talk about is the alarm client. Um, so the alarm client is going to be where you, you're going to do most of your monitoring from if you're, if you're monitoring the VMS system itself. And this is a place where you can go and monitor live video as well as uh, go back and look at recorded video, export video clips, and things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and bring up the uh, alarm client and go through it, and we'll take a, we'll take a quick look at uh, some of the things within the alarm client. Let me close out Frontier real quick here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the video client. Now, all, all of the uh, client software as well as the server software, uh, of course, you can set it up with usernames and passwords, uh, and which you can also set up permissions as far as which cameras you can view and certain aspects of the system uh, that the operator is allowed to do. So I'm connecting to my configuration server, which is my VMS. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So immediately it's opening up my headquarters front office view. Uh, there's a couple different ways we can set up views in the system. Um, we can do views from the, uh, from the user level. So as an administrator, I can set up views uh, for a group of users. And those, those views are going to come down from the server as I set them up. I can also set up custom views uh, as an operator myself. Um, that'll that'll basically be tied to my user login. So, you know, these up here are kind of tied. These are tied to the user group, and these are tied to the user login itself. So I can actually come up here, choose my different views, and these are all live right now within within our system here at our headquarters. Uh, from here, as I'm viewing these, I can do F11, and I can bring this to full screen. 
to view. Of course, I've still got my video pop-up going down, on, going as well down here. So this is giving me a live view, as well as going to give me visibility uh, of alarms as they occur within the system. From these views right here, uh, if I'd like to drill in and look and take a closer look at things, I can double-click them and get a larger view. Of course, I can expand from here as well to get a full screen view. And if I double-click, it takes me back. Um, I can also do a pan-tilt zoom for most cameras. So uh, even if the camera isn't set up to do PTZ, we can also do uh, digital zooming on the cameras as well. Uh, so basically what that's going to do is just digital, uh, digitally zoom in to what you already have on the screen. So it's not going to be an optical type zoom. It's, it's really just going to take the digital feed and it's going to zoom into the digital feed. So I'm going to go ahead and quick, uh, quickly uh, create a custom view here. So we'll call this test view. And I'm doing this at the operator level, so it'll be specific to me. And I'll just do a 2x2. Uh, two two. We'll do a 16-9 aspect ratio. We can do 4-3 as well. So right now I have no cameras here, but this is, uh, this is as simple as it is to create a view. Uh, you know, just highlight it, drag the camera. There's a front lobby. Uh, we can do the vestibule over here, do the hallway here, and then maybe uh, we'll take a look at the uh, rear entry the dock door in the back here. Uh, so that, that's all it took to create that view. Now that view is there. Um, I can manipulate the view just as easy uh, by just highlighting cameras. So if I want to go back to my test view and just say I want to look at the lounge, just drag it over and look at it. And it will remember uh, the last camera that I actually uh, put into the window pane in that view. Right here you'll notice we have uh, maps. So maps are very interesting as well. This is a great tool. This is going to give us a good visualization of, of the layout of whatever the facility is. So right here you can see we can create these, uh, these views here. This will give us an idea of what this camera is actually looking at. Um, what I can do is I can hover over this and it'll actually give me the view of the camera, which is really nice. Um, I can double click on it. And I can bring up the view as well from here. If you look here, this is our headquarters. This is our, our building here in Miamisburg. So I can just hover over here and I can see this is a production. This is exactly what it's looking at. This is our, our production area in the back of the warehouse. If I hover over it, uh, I get the view of the cage to the left here. So if I double click on it, so that's our cage where we keep some equipment back there, and then we have a production area over here as well. Uh, this is the rear entry dock door that we had just looked at. Uh, the, the kitchen PTZ view. So this is a kitchen camera. As you can see, we got an alarm going off in the right corner here. Front lobby, vestibule, and then the uh, front hallway. So the nice thing about the maps is, no, no, you know, not only can you, you figure out the placement of where these cameras are within your facility, you can also get a quick view and, and get a quick live view of these cameras as well as define the area that the camera is looking at. So some of the other things I can do from here is uh, playback of video. So um, this is where I can go back and find my alarms and, and play back different clips. So if we come back here and look at, let's look at the vestibule. And we'll look at this morning, maybe from 7 to, say, 9 a.m. ish. And I can do a search. So, so from here, these are all, when well, you see the red, these are uh, motion. The, the green is scheduled recording, where it's just, it, it's been told just to record on a schedule. The red is actually a uh, event that happened, uh, a motion event. So if we come over here, take a look at one. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it to give me the video and then I hit play. So every time somebody comes through the vestibule, uh, I get a, uh, uh, a motion of that. So it, it makes it you know, pretty easy to find these things. So I can see if different people are coming into the building in the morning.
Now I can also from here I can start to do things uh, like zooming in digitally, you know, pan tilt within my zoom. But you know, from here you can you can go ahead and you can take snapshots. So now I'm zoomed in a little bit here digitally, uh, and I can actually take a snapshot of this person coming in if I'd like. So I can stop it, take a snapshot, save it as a bitmap or a JPEG, maybe print it. Um, so if I save it as a, a JPEG, I'll go ahead and do that on the on the desktop here. So you can see I got a nice crisp view here. Um, this is a this is a high megapixel high def camera here, so I'm getting a pretty nice view. So I can also go back to, I can switch between live and playback. Um, if I want to go ahead and choose a different camera here, I'll do a search. We'll actually see some transactions uh, that are associated or, or very close to the same time as uh, the first transactions we were looking at. So, so right here. I've got this set up for motion when any, whenever anybody comes down the hallway from here. So if this was the clip I was interested in particular, I could go ahead and stop this clip. I could do an export from here. A uh, couple different varieties of ways to export to file, to DVD or CD, or you can add your video to the queue if you're in an investigation type mode and you want to just create a queue with different uh, uh, clips in it. But if I go ahead and do it to file disk, let's call it test. AVI. I'll save that. Now, when I export the clip, I can also include the standalone video player, which is usually a good idea. It makes it a lot easier for the uh, end user. They'll have the, the player itself, and the, the file will always be able to be played on whatever machine they have. So I'm going to go ahead and play that AVI just to give you an idea of the quality. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do some to the queue here, just to give you an example of saving to the queue. So now you can see I've got a test queue clip here. I could go back maybe search for some other things here. Maybe this is a, a clip I'm interested in as well. So I can go ahead and export this one as well. So now I've got a couple on the queue here and this makes it a little bit easier. Now I can just come back here Without having to go back and search, I can see uh, different, different uh, clips that I'm interested in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close the client, and I'm going to go ahead back to my PowerPoint here. There, there's obviously a lot more functionality and things we can do within the clip, but I just kind of want to give a, an overview of, of the different modules here. So we also have the, the alarm client. So let's, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the alarm client. So on the alarm client, I'm going to go ahead and add my server to it so I can start receiving alarms. So the alarm client, uh, the alarm client is, is meant to be used basically as a monitor. So, so what you can do is, what we can do is, we're getting very similar information on these on these windows here that we are when you see the alarm pop up in the corner here. But this is actually going to give us the ability to see more cameras, and actually we'll have the alarms and the times very similar to how we search through the client software as as uh, alarms were occurring. They were building up in a queue. And that's the same thing that's going to happen here. Alarms are going to build up in this queue. Uh, and this, 
it's nice because this is meant to be on a monitor where there's nothing going on. As an alarm occurs, it should draw the operator's attention to the monitor to review the video or, or to see the video. So this one's going to be dependent on some alarms going off. So we'll go ahead and actually maybe leave this up here on the side. Um, and as, as alarms go off, we'll, we'll start to get some events here uh, in this queue. So there you go. We got the rear entry. And you see we got a, a motion going on here with a truck that's coming for delivery that's come into the frame, into the zone that I've set up. Um, nice thing about this is, uh, you know, as, as more alarms occur, they're just going to start filling up the windows. So if, if there was another, you know, two or three at the same time, it's just going to keep filling up these panes. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to leave this open and go back to my PowerPoint, and then we'll, we'll let some things build up, some alarms build up there. So we talked about the alarm client as well as, as the, uh, just the client software itself. Um, I think some of the other things I want to show you is going to be that we do have the ability to the web client, which is going to be very similar to just the standard alarm client. So if I open up a browser, tell Java to save my password so I don't have to keep doing that. So this is giving me similar view to that I had uh, in my full client. Um, so what I can do is I can do the same things or very similar things in the uh, web software as I can in the client. So I can do live views, which we're doing right now. I can also do the playback. So if I click on playback, I can come up here and I can define exactly the times I'm looking for, similar to what I was doing uh, from the full client view. So I'm going to narrow this frame here, the time, and look for some stuff at the front lobby. So now I can go in here. Now these are, the, these are pretty much kind of the same transactions we were looking at before from earlier today. Uh, but I'm doing it from the web client. So as far as the web client, you're going to get pretty similar functionality to the, to the full client, but not quite all of the functionality. Um, you know, the views are somewhat limited here. Um, we, can, we can set up multiple views um, from the live aspect. Uh, we, we have four different choices. So if we want to do something like this, um, you know, same kind of idea on the views here. The difference here is I can't. I have four choices. I can't define the views at this level. I have to just drag my cameras into um, these predetermined sizes or formats, uh, and then and it will remember those settings. So I just drag and drop them over here, um, and then I'll I'll be able to fill up these uh, these different views with the cameras that I have. And once again, I I have the ability to go back and search for clips within uh, within these cameras. One other thing we're going to do here is take a look at the admin console. So I'm going to add my server. Oh, whoops. I'm going to put in a password. Oh. Okay, let me remove it. And add it again. Here we go. This should work. Okay. So the admin console is, is really going to be designed to give you visibility of the system uh, kind of from a health standpoint. So if you look here, this is my only server I have running right now. Uh, it is doing my recording and it is doing my video management as well. Um, the server address, uh, the name of the server, version that it's at, 
um, license statuses, and then it goes through and shows you some of the attributes of the server as far as memory and CPU usage. Uh, and, it's, and it's giving you a, a good idea of what's going on there. Um, if you come over here, you can look at cameras. So these, these indicators, this, this, this uh, green is showing us that, yes, this is a, a scheduled recording. Um, this right here means there's an alarm going on. Uh, this means that there's, this is an actual PTZ camera. If you don't see the joystick, then it's not a PTZ camera. Um, and as you can see, always red, and then I got the alarm. On the rear entry dock, I do not have it designed for a pop-up right now. The volume is where I actually store my video. So I'm storing it locally to this server right now. Uh, and these are some of the events that are, are actually going on in the server. And this is going to show me actual real-time events as they're occurring. Um, and these are, these are you know, basically showing me alarms um, and, and some type of health type statuses as well to do with my cameras. And then this is going to show me the connections to the server itself what clients are connecting, uh, the users that are logged in as well. And, and sometimes it will give you a description of what they're actually doing. So like remote live view of camera 2, camera 5. So the admin console is, is designed to give you really a, a clear view of your system health, uh, the setup of your system, the connections to your system. Okay. We also do have a mobile application for Frontier Video. Uh, I, I don't really have the ability to show that right now, but um, it's going to give you the ability to create live camera views. Uh, you'll actually be able to control PCZ cameras from here, um, view event-driven uh, video and search for it, um, and do things like enable and disable camera audio and, and do snapshots and, and email those snapshots as well. Um, probably the last thing I'm going to show you guys is going to be uh, just, uh, we, we've talked about the Frontier interface in the last webinar I did. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over some of these things real quick and, and show you um, a new feature that we've we've added onto it. So, uh, you know, currently we we're able to associate video cameras to different types of access control system alarms. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of an alarm we can associate to any kind within the access control system. So, Ajaris, Norforce, Duress, things like that. Um, we're able to view and control live cameras. Um, we can receive. Uh, alarms within the access control system on the operation screen. Um, and we've, we've created ways to quickly be able to, to view this information and to go back and look at recorded video as well as uh, be able to view the live video at the same time. And that's what you're seeing here. This is a recorded video window. And then I've got a, a live video window as well that it's going to give me if I, if I choose to look at that at the time. Uh, the one thing that we have added, uh, which is which was um, quite a lot, actually, is the ability to associate cameras to doors for door transaction-driven video. Uh, and that's really what the main thing that I'd like to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to open up Frontier. I'm going to log into the Frontier Access Control System. And if you notice, it opens up my, video, my windows in the same place to where it, it allowed for my alarm pop-up to kind of have its own little space down here without, uh, without getting in the way of my alarm queue. Uh, if my alarm queue was over here, it wouldn't matter. It's always going to show up above it. So what I'd like to show here is go ahead and do a Bolo alarm. So this is a BOLO alarm that, I, that I've created for this person. A BOLO alarm means be on the lookout. So uh, a be on the lookout alarm is, is treated, it's a little bit different than any of our other alarms. 
in the fact that it's tied to an actual badge transaction. Uh, in our access control system, the alarm queue is giving you basically information that's not typically ever related to a badge transaction. Um, if you see right here, a, a credential bowl alarm is actually, it, this is actually a badge transaction. So it's the way that you can signify that I'm looking for this person and alert the operator to actually um, to investigate further when they see this type of alarm. So from here, we can view recorded video. And like right now we're seeing recorded video. I can click this button. Now I'm seeing live and recorded. Um, and this is that transaction I just did. So you see me uh, presenting the card to the reader there. So that was driven from an alarm, uh, particularly a BOLO alarm. Uh, I could do it, you know, I can drive video from any type of alarm. So even on a comm failure on a building controller, I could do that as well. So if I had a, a, a building controller um, or a, even a, just any type of a device on a comm failure le le uh, level, I could uh, associate a camera to that device if it's in the area or maybe it's in a closet or something like that. I could associate that camera to it. And when it lost comm failure, you could bring up video and see in that room when it lost comm failure. So maybe... Uh, you know, maybe somebody was in that room doing something, working on something else, and just happened to knock your controller offline, you'd have visibility of that. Uh, the feature that we've added is the ability to just have standard door transactions. So what I just did uh, presenting this card for this transaction, uh, this is not an alarm. This is just a door transaction. So what I've done is associated a video camera to this door. So all the transactions that go on at this door, because I've, I've set it up that way, will, will associate video to that transaction. So if you look right here, I've got an icon, click to view event video. So I click that, and then I'll go ahead and open live at the same time. That's, that's, a lot, that's what you would see operators do a lot, is, is actually look at recorded video as well as live at the same time. But you'll see me uh, present the card over here. Uh, I know this looked exactly like uh, what I had done prior, but that's just because of the way I set it up. The other one, I had set up the bolo alarm for the card transaction. This is strictly just a card transaction. So this will give you the ability to you know, go over and, and review transactions, card transactions, and uh, you, can, uh, you, know, you can associate, you know, obviously this isn't the best uh, example where you can't see my face at this reader. You would typically want to a camera here pointing at the person who's doing the transaction. That way you could take that video clip, associate it with the existing image when that person was enrolled in the system, uh, you know, and, and be able to make a comparison to see if uh, it actually matches. Some of the other things you can do here, so at this level I can do a history of this particular credential. So if you look now, I've got a history of where this person has gone through, and I can tweak this in many different ways. I can I can I can look at more transactions if I want to, and look look at less transactions if I want to. Uh, but it gives me the ability to go in and, and look at history of this credential. And if I have video, I can go ahead and select that. I'm sorry. Let me go back. There we go. Actually, let me start over there. So I can go ahead and select that click video, and now I'm looking at that specific video from that transaction. Uh, and I can do that with all the transactions that have happened at that door. And if I'm looking at the actual person level, this is going to be history for Mark Heinzman. This is going to be history for that credential. So if Mark Heinzman, if I actually had multiple credentials, this was going to give me all the different credential numbers and I'd be able to look at all the things associated with that person and the credentials they've been using. Do something very similar at the alarm level, where I can do a view history on the alarm. And as you can see, very similar to the screen that we just saw at the credential level, where we have different uh, alarm active activities or different instances of the alarm that we're able to highlight and go back and look at the video of when that occurred. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, does anybody have any questions about uh, anything that we've gone through?
in the webinar. Uh, really wanted to just kind of rehash on some of the old things that we had talked about uh, in the last in the last webinar, as well as just give a view of, of you know the the system in action. Um, there's you know there's much more depth to the system, but in the webinar I can only do so much. So if anyone is interested in seeing more of the system, uh, we would be more than happy to have a representative set up a you know a webinar or some type of demonstration to really dig even deeper into the application. Um, but if anybody has any questions, uh, you can go ahead and shoot them to me in the uh, in the text down here under questions. Uh, I don't see anything right now, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. And uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll just wait and see if I get anything in the queue here. All right. Well, uh, once again, you know, if anybody is interested in seeing uh, more in depth. Uh, demonstration on the video. Uh, we'd be happy to set that up. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, thanks everybody for your time today, and uh, have a great afternoon.